shots began eavesdropping on the heavens. The strongest and most puzzling signals have come from the hearts of distant galaxies. Astronomers now suspect these radio signals are generated by central supermassive black holes. Mighty jets of energized particles are blasted into space from an invisible engine that drives these so-called radio galaxies like great wheels through the heavens. Nameless stars are ripped apart by an immense gravity to feed central disks of white-hot matter, shining a hundred times more brightly than a whole galaxy of stars like our Milky Way. Powering everything is the hidden central object, as small as our solar system but where enough matter to make millions or even billions of stars has undergone a titanic gravitational collapse. Tonight we're looking at the radio galaxy M87. M87 is a nearby giant galaxy which is very unusual in having a large powerful jet coming out of it. M87's jet is like an enormous death ray of charged particles moving close to the speed of light and 6,000 light years in length. The jet is a signature of the way the black hole is swirling matter and space around it. Astronomers use the speed of this swirling matter to calculate the black hole's mass. Well, we're talking about a black hole which is a billion solar masses or more, uh, which uh, is therefore is much larger than anything we are used to seeing in our own galaxy, uh, but is fairly typical of what we think many radio galaxies have in their nucleus. Astronomers suspect radio galaxies are those galaxies with plenty of matter left for the black hole to eat. If a galaxy appears quiet, it's probably because the black hole has run out of food. If we look in the center of almost any galaxy, there should be lurking a dark mass of millions of solar masses at least, which may be the remnant of some past activity in that galaxy. And in the last few years, there's been growing evidence that these dark masses actually do exist. But seeing them is still beyond us. Even the latest high-resolution Hubble images can show only the bright central disk, the jets of energized particles, but not the black speck in the middle. As you know, the problem with black holes is that they're black and their holes are extremely difficult to show that they're there. If you see a hole in the road, you know the hole is there because of the surrounding road, not because of the hole itself. And similarly, we are doing the kind of work of looking at material around the black hole and clinching the case that there really is the black hole in the center. Long extension there. We're looking at a, a galaxy in the constellation of Centaurus. At the center of this galaxy, we think that there's a massive black hole, perhaps a hundred million times the mass of the sun, and matter is falling into that black hole, making it very bright in X-rays. These X-rays are the last gasps from matter like iron, holding on until the bitter end. Their spectral signatures are stretched in just the way theory would expect from X-rays struggling to escape a deep pit of gravity. It seems Fabian is very close to seeing the event horizon of the black hole itself. We will never be able to appreciate the full majesty of the supermassive black hole from Earth. Time for our spacecraft to make another journey.
It is one of the great cosmological contradictions that the larger the black hole, the weaker the gravitational forces near the event horizon. This time, there is no spaghetti. As we approach the event horizon, the intense gravitational curvature wrenches the light from the universe to a bright point directly overhead. We have reached the point of no return. We are now inside the black hole. But where is the singularity? If you were falling into a black hole and the singularity, you, you knew from your calculations that the singularity was out there and you're heading for it, you look at it, you don't see it. It's like the singularity that you're heading for in the future and you don't actually see it. The singularity is where science ends and speculation begins. The singularity is an object at the core of a black hole that is governed not by the ordinary laws of physics that we're familiar with, but by the laws of quantum gravity, which we only are beginning to glimpse and understand. If the probe was strong enough, it would fall towards the singularity for perhaps an hour until it blindly met its future at the end of space and time. You would then experience the final uh, crunch in the center, learning in your final moments the new physics prevailing at those times perhaps, but you'd be able to send no signal to the external world of the interior region. What really happens to it at the end is as is, is unknown as what happened before the Big Bang, it's, it's the other end of that story. Astronomers are virtually certain that hidden behind the dust in the center of our own Milky Way galaxy, there is a black hole weighing three million times the mass of the Sun. Our first object. You think Even as little as five years ago, people thought that we could get away with not having to have black holes in our own galaxy. We could explain almost everything we see by neutron stars. No theorist now uh, believes that we're dealing with ordinary neutron stars anymore. There are things out there that they have to be compact and they have to be explained. And I think that's an extremely exciting prospect. Everybody has trouble coming to terms with black holes. Locked within these prisons of light are the secrets of the universe. Where did it come from and where is it going to? We may never answer these questions, but for once, we know where the answers are hidden.